Yes, there's another question here. Uh, this is related to the hadith of Ali radiallahu anhu in the battlefield. How do we remain steadfast in the face of our enemy whom openly mocked our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa This question is from a sister. Okay, uh, that's a very good question. What do we do when somebody insults our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa The first time it happened to me, I was at George Mason University giving a speech. After the speech, one came up to me, he's not Muslim, he was an old man actually, and he, was, he knows Arabic, and he came in my face and he said, what do you say about a 53-year-old man that has sex with a six-year-old girl? Whoa, when he said this, I almost passed out because I couldn't believe anybody would talk like this. I couldn't believe somebody would say something like this. I knew what he meant by what he said. I was so upset, I started taking my coat off. And I would give it to the sheikh who was with me. I said, you know, just hold my coat. <laughs> I'm going to go on this guy. And as I was taking my coat off, I looked at him. I said, this depends on your question. If it's a rhetorical question or if you're insulting my prophet, in which case I'm going to take you out back and beat your head off your shoulders. He said, no, 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 it's rhetorical. I said, in this case, it doesn't need an answer. Obviously, what he said, no Muslim would support this idea. Because our Prophet never would do something like this. Our Prophet did not do what this man said. But the way he said it, people would think, ah, oh, this is Muhammad. Ah. Our Prophet was the example for us. And he was the mercy to mankind. I had to go to the scholars and ask them, how do I answer the question? They said, first of all, you don't get angry. This is in the Hadith of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. La tagdab. Somebody said, give me nasiha, la tagdab. And then, la tagdab, la tagdab. Don't get angry. Take it easy. Keep your cool. Take it easy. Second thing is, when you don't know, just say, I don't know. But be kind to them. Maybe they will listen to the answer. So the next time, I saw the same guy again. I'm ready. This time, he started with another question. It's nothing but an insult, the way he said it. But this time I said, thank you for asking me about my religion. He went, huh? He didn't expect that. He thinks I'm going to get angry. Not now. I know we shouldn't do that. Thank you for asking me about my religion. And then, say this. As a Muslim, I cannot lie. As a Muslim, I cannot lie. If I lie, I can go to hell. And if I don't tell the truth, if I make a mistake, you can check it out anyway because everything in Islam is preserved 100%. Mia Mia, the Quran and the Sunnah, we still have it today as we had it centuries ago. So it's there. So it's easy. We can find the answer. But by the way, and here it comes. Are you listening? If while you are listening to my answer you like the answer so much that you say that's better than what i have are you going to be ready to make a move to something better he said yeah and then i began to give the answer first of all the hadiths are in bukhari and it's two one it says Aisha is six years old and her mother listen to the hadith her mother comes to her and takes her into the house. She's playing in the dirt. Her mother takes her into the house to her father. So far, did you hear the word sex in there? No. And her father is doing a tradition which is a part of the Arab tradition forever. He's offering his daughter in marriage to his best friend, someone who is a leader, someone who is very important to him, and he's saying, I want you to marry my daughter. Hmm? But then what? She's back outside playing in the dirt. Yes or no? No. Yeah. Where did you hear sex in there? I think you've been standing in the checkout line of the grocery store too long looking at the tabloids with that word S-E-X on it. Oh, 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 that's all you're thinking about. This is not our prophet, so long. The other hadith, she's older. The mother's taken to the father. The father's often her in marriage. And look what it said in the Quran in chapter 4, verse 19. Very clear, it tells... Oh, you who believe, you cannot inherit women against their will. In order for a woman to get married, 
she has to be old enough to know what's going on and understand it and old enough to have children yeah, otherwise she can't get married it's not a legal marriage in Islam yes or no so what do you think it gives us the example that even though she was betrothed at an early age they didn't get married until she was old enough the man standing there going I didn't know that I didn't know that I didn't know that it happened again when I was in Chennai the same subject come up and I told another one the same way he said really I said yes but I'm gonna ask you a question everything we know about their marriage is coming to us from her read what she said and think out of 2200 sayings or hadith from her roughly 26 2200 she is saying only what the best things about her husband Muhammad Sallallahu yes or no and all that she said again and again she's praising him loving him caring about him she talks about when she was young she used to race with him and she used to beat him she said I got older I got heavy and then he used to beat me in the races she used to tease him she played tricks on him we know from the Quran some tricks that she played whoa watch out but still he was a very caring and loving husband to her so much so when he died Sallallahu he wanted her to be there he died right there in that house with his head in her lap and what was the last thing she did she used a tooth stick and she cleaned it for him and opened it up and put it in his mouth because she knew how much he liked it and in this way and in this condition he passed away and for the rest of her life she narrated from him and never said a single bad word ever about her husband do you know any women today who could go their whole life and never say something bad about their husband hello do you know a woman who can go even one year or one month or one week maybe not even one day and she's saying something about her husband Aisha radiallahu anha never said a single bad word on her husband yes or no and she never even considered to look at another man for the rest of her life in her heart and in her mind she is still married to Muhammad sallallahu and they will be together in Jannah in Jannah in the paradise and live there happily ever after I'm asking you a simple question is this the best love story you ever heard or do you like the story of Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet on Valentine's Day huh talking about oh what a love story Romeo and Juliet two young lovers one a preteen maybe 12 and 114 something like this very young from two separate tribes that did not like each other they hated each other they were fighting so the Capulets on the one side and the other family on the other side and they hate each other and they don't want their children to even know each other so they sneak behind their back did they get married no what did they do I don't want to mention and then what one of them commits suicide and then the other one commits suicide according to the Jewish religion Christian religion and Islam they go to hell compare that to the story of Muhammad and Aisha and tell me what you think is really the story of romance and he said ashhadu la ilaha illallah ashhadu muhammad rasulullah mashallah just remember this no matter how harsh the questions come you have a responsibility to present islam in the best way don't try to be ahmed didat or don't try to be zakir naik don't try to be yusuf asses be you be yourself as the best Muslim you can be wallahi and I don't like to say wallahi because I'm not Arab anyway but when I say this I really mean I wish all of us would just use what Allah gave us and be the best Muslim you can be this would destroy shaitan on this planet he wouldn't have a chance may Allah guide us I mean